Hello everyone. All right, let's finish this off. So now to add our audio controls to our command system so we can use them inside of our visual novel and dialogue files, we need to create the database extension for the audio type. So let's make a new class called CMD database extension audio and let's go from there. Don't forget to use the commands namespace if you had your commands in that namespace, that is, and make sure that we are inheriting from the database extension class. And now inside of our extend function, let's go ahead and do the first step by adding a command to play our sound effects. We're going to call this play SFX, and it's going to be a new action, no need to make this a coroutine, and it's going to be for a command called play SFX. So if we create a new static void for play SFX, then pass in string data, then we can configure the audio manager to play a certain sound effect for us. In order to know what parameters we need, we need to look at the function we're going to be calling. That function is, of course, play sound effect in the audio manager. So we know that we need a file path to load the sound from. We need to, we don't need to specify an audio mixer because we can do that directly within the uh, function. Or maybe we will. Maybe, maybe we can do that. But we do need volume, we need pitch, and we need to define if this is looping or not. So let's go ahead and do that. A file path, volume, pitch, and loop. Those are the variables that we'll be defining. And like we always do, let's go ahead and make this easy on ourselves and convert our data into a parameter class. Next, we need to define our parameters and retrieve them. We can define them up above having our file path, which is actually the sound being used as dash S or SFX, which maybe I'll change that from file path now that I'm thinking about it to param SFX name or SFX. We'll just do SFX. Then volume as either V, vol or volume, pitch as P or pitch, and well, you know the rest. And then we just go through and try to find and cast out those parameters. Now, in order to allow us to find the resource, I've gone ahead and go in, into the file paths and set up the default resources audio directory, as well as a shortcut to the resources sound effects directory, which is inside of audio. So that leads us to audio SFX. And I've also added the public static function get path to resource, which is essentially what we were using for our graphic panels, but I've moved it into file paths because it makes more sense to be here. What this does is perform the check for our home directory symbol and can either allow us to search for the resource at the root of the resources folder or at the supplied default path. And of course that means for graphic panels, all I did was replace the reference to the local get path to graphic with filepaths.get path to resource. And with that, we go ahead and try to find the sound using that path that we have found from the parameters and defaulting it to the location of resources sound effects, allowing ourselves also to specify the root of the directory if we want to head somewhere very specific by using filepaths.get path to resource. And then if the sound is null, we do nothing, but if it's not, we call play sound effect from the audio manager, passing in the sound, the volume, the pitch, and the loop. I've also gone in and added the default values, so volume will always default to 1 if not specified, pitch to 1, and loop to false. So now if we run a test file and say play sound effect thunder strong, and make sure that that's the testing script we're using, then we load up and it goes ahead and executes the code and plays the sound effect. We can also change the pitch. And of course the other parameters as well. And setting those variables, we can see that our sound takes the new volume, it takes the loop parameter as well, and the pitch. And speaking of looping sound effects, now we can add the command to stop a sound effects sound effect by the name, using a static void stop sound effect which only takes a single string, and we throw that to the audio manager to stop the sound effect by that name. Running this in our test file, after we click after the narrator speaks, it will go ahead and stop the thunder if it's playing. And there we go. Our next command is for voices, so I've gone into the file path and added a new reference to the voices location inside of the audio resources folder. 
And then we were able to add the new command for play voice, which will use a new command called play voice, and stop voice, which is the same as stop sound effect, so I'm just referencing stop sound effect again. Now, as for play voice, what that does is it does everything that play sound effect does, except it changes where it pulls the data from. So we still get the same parameters, but then the file path that we're defaulting to is resources voices, the one we just created. And when we play the voice, we are using the play voice command instead of play sound effect. That way it uses the voice mixer. And to see it in action, we can make Stella say yes as she says some dialogue. Yes! The next thing we'll do is we'll add the resources for our music and our ambience, the references to those directories. And with music and ambience, they'll use some additional parameters that we didn't have to define for effects. So I'll reference these parameter identifiers for the channel, whether this is immediate or not, the starting volume of the track, whether this is a song, and whether it's ambience. And then we'll add two commands, play song and play ambience, which we'll call play song and play ambience respectively. These two functions are identical to each other. They both start off with the data, and we only attempt to get the file path and the channel from that data. So we look for the file path, looking for the parameter song in play song, while looking for parameter ambience in ambience. And of course, that's an optional parameter. We can just pass in the name of it, which is very easy to uh, write out. And then we try to find the file path. If it's ambience, we look under resources ambience by default. If it's a song, we look under resources music by default. And by default, the channel for music I'm going to set to 1, while the channel for ambience is always going to be set to 0. Once we have those two basic parameters down for the file we're loading and the channel, then we call play track, which takes the file path, the channel, and the rest of the parameters. This is used for both songs and ambience. And now we look for the loop, immediate, volume cap, start volume, and pitch, and we try to get all those values together. So ignoring immediate for right now, we're going to go ahead and run the logic just like we did for our sound effect, and then we're going to call audiomanager.instance.playtrack, passing in the track as the sound, the channel, and all the rest of those parameters. Which means then I can call play ambience, rainy mood, which will lo load this from the ambience directory, and play song, electric drift, which will load from the music directory. Yes! And we have both of our channels for ambience and music. Actually, I decided I didn't even need the immediate boolean. Just going to go ahead and play the track, and if I want something starting at max volume, I will define the start volume via that parameter. The next thing we're going to run is stop song and stop ambience, which essentially do the same thing by stopping a track. I'm just making them in this name since I have play song and play ambience. It'll make it a little, uh, it'll make it a little more friendly, I guess, for me when I write in this uh, visual novel. That way I don't have three different functions, play song, play ambience, and stop track. It's then like, what is a track? But if I have stop song and stop ambience, I can easily relate those two together, even though they will basically do the same thing. And what this does is it takes a look at the data that we're passing in. It can either be the channel, which will be identified if it's able to be parsed as an integer, and then we'll send that to the audio manager to stop the track on that channel. If not, then we're going to pass in what is assumed to be the name of a track, and we're going to st try to stop a track on any channel by that name. Currently, we don't have that functionality. So if we go to the audio manager, let's make another variant of stop track. Public void stop track which will take a string for the track name. And what this is going to do is we're going to have to take a look at each channel and ask it if it has a track by this name, and if it does, stop it. What this function will do is we'll make it case insensitive, and then we'll go through each channel in our dictionary and figure out if the active track is the same track. While I'm at it, if channel.activeTrack is not equal to null and the active track name is the name we're looking for, then we're going to stop that track. Then we can run stop song for electric gift and stop ambience for rainy mood. And what should happen is when we click, both of them fade out and they are destroyed.
Even better, instead of having to type in the name of the song, if I know I only have one playing, I can just type stop song or stop ambience and make it even shorter, make it even easier to write, and it still makes sense what it's doing. We're stopping the only ambient track that's running. Now that's good in theory, but the way this works with our action type, stop song and stop ambience must have a string passed in. And if we don't pass one in, then we're going to get an error. So what we can do is on our command manager, when we're waiting for process to complete and we're calling all of these things to run, what we can do is we can do a little check if we're only passing in one string that will allow us to use, that will allow us to pass in at the same time, nothing. So we will just simply check if args.length is zero. If it is, then we instead pass in an empty string. Otherwise, we go ahead and pass in the data that was given. Which means if we call stop song and stop ambience instead of stop, stop track, then we can evaluate the data. If there's no data, then we autofill it with the default track for the songs and for the ambience. One for stop song and one for stop ambience. And that means I don't have to type in stop song electric drift when it's the only one running. I can just type stop song. And we click and it closes out which just means we'll want to do the same thing for our I enumerator that takes a single string. If we don't have any values that we pass in, pass in an empty string. That way, this sort of logic is available to us in the future if we decide to use it, just as in this case. And that, of course, just requires changing out stop track for stop song and stop ambience for those respective functions. Last thing I want to change is a over, small oversight, that if we're playing a track, I want the default value to be true for looping. That way, by default, our songs and our ambience will loop until we tell it to stop. So that's it for this episode. we finished with our audio system for now. You can now play sound effects, voices, music, ambience, and control them from your dialogue files. So that's going to end this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one.